Hey everybody, I'm Jack and this is Raw Tropical Living and I'd like to thank you for joining me today. As you can tell by the title, this is a little departure from what I normally talk about. And quite frankly, I think this may be the most important video, one of the most important videos I make and probably because it's not about raw food, and it's not keyworded for raw food, uh, I don't know how the follow, like how many views or how many people will be interested in this. But anyway, it's some things that I'm interested in so I thought I would share it with you. Uh, a lot of times like books get put into our lives or um, we come upon certain things because we need to. I'm rereading a book called The Miracle of Mindfulness, An Introduction to the Practice of Meditation by Thich Nhat Hanh. And you spell that T-I-C-H-N-H-A-T-H-A-N-H. That's three words. Um, I've been following this guy for probably some 20 so years now and I've read several of his books. Um, probably have another one. Yes, I do. Pieces Every Step on my bookshelf back here. But anyhow, I had read this book before, and he's a, he's a, this is a beautiful man. This guy is about 80, 80 years old, or he's over 80 years old. He was uh, exiled from Vietnam back during the days of the Vietnam War because he was a peace activist back then. And he was a contemporary of Martin Luther King Jr., who... Um, put him up for the Nobel Peace Prize. Now, I forget the story if he actually won the Nobel Peace Prize or if he was just nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. But anyway, this is a beautiful man. This guy is all about, um, all about love, all about mindfulness. Uh, he's one of the most gentle human beings I've ever um, read about, studied about in my life. Um, he's actually, there's a monastery where they do retreats in France called um, Plum Village. And, you know, as he's getting up into age, I really hope that I can make a way to get there, you know, in his lifetime because it would just be um, really inspiring to, to go to one of these retreats. Anyway, mindfulness. Um, I'm going to read a little bit first and then I'm going to tell you kind of the aha moment I had on this the other night when I was really thinking about it. While washing the dishes, one should only be washing the dishes, which means that while washing the dishes, one should be completely aware of the fact that one is washing the dishes. At first glance, that might seem a little silly. Why put so much stress on a simple thing? But that's precisely the point. The fact that I'm standing there and washing these bowls is a wondrous reality. I'm being completely myself, following my breath, conscious of my presence, and conscious of my thoughts and actions. There's no way I can be tossed around mindlessly like a bottle slapped here and there on the waves. Um, and he's talking about, he gets later on, he tells another little story, but it's basically about the washing of the dishes. And he says, if while washing dishes we think only of the cup of tea that awaits us, thus hurrying to get the dishes out of the way, as if they were a nuisance, then we are not washing the dishes to wash the dishes. What's more, we are not alive during the time we are washing the dishes. Did you hear that? What's more, we are not alive during the time we are washing the dishes. In fact, we are completely incapable of realizing the miracle of life while standing at the sink. If we can't wash the dishes, the chances are we won't be able to drink our tea either. While drinking the cup of tea, we will only be thinking of other things, barely aware of the cup in our hands. Thus, we are sucked away into the future, and we are incapable of actually living one minute of life. Now he goes into next telling a similar story uh, using the analogy of a tambourine. A tambourine. <laughs> I can't think and do two things at the same time. A tangerine. And he talks about eating the sections and how you can peel the tangerine. And um, he's talking about a friend of his just wolfing down section after section instead of enjoying each section. Okay, I'm reading this and I've read this before. And I... I'm interested in the concept of mindfulness. I like to think I practice mindfulness, but then when you really catch yourself, you realize, no, you really don't. Um, and when he starts talking about washing the dishes, it makes you think of all the mundane things we do during the day, or, you know, even going to work. And it seems like it's all about, if we're not careful, our life can just be gone like that, because life is meant, made up, of these mundane moments. Life isn't about these great things we wait for like somebody's birthday or Christmas or this big event or graduating from high school, graduating from college, getting this job, getting to a vacation. Life is about what is happening in this very second. And 
unless you're a superstar, celebrity, richer than God, whatever, and just have the money to entertain yourself relentlessly, um, there's probably a lot of what most people consider boring, li boring moments that make up this thing we call life. And probably percentage-wise, these great things or these big events or things that we look forward to are such a small percentage of our life that if we're overlooking the everyday things, like, um, like for instance, yeah, it was yesterday. I was taking a walk. I took a little break at work, and I walked into town to get a smoothie. And as I'm thinking about this mindfulness, and I had done some reading that morning, I'm thinking, you know, I'm really trying to be aware. I'm trying to focus on everything around me. I'm trying to take in... I'm trying to take in the wind on my face. I'm trying to take in the smells. I'm trying, I hear birds. I hear a different bird. Um, I see things on the sidewalk. I see plants. I see a flower. I see a little girl over here. I see people. And I'm trying to just like be as much in the moment as I can possibly be. Um, you know, down, this is something I would really like to be more intense and work on and I'm going to be more intense and in working on it. I kind of think it's going to be one of those things that's um, not a fun exercise for me because it's kind of like you're like always being aware. So I'm sure it's kind of like meditation in the beginning. You try to meditate and your mind just wanders everywhere. So I imagine in the beginning of trying to be mindful that you're, you're still doing the same old things. You're just going through the motions when you do things. But it's just the beginning. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying. And I think with awareness, awareness is uh, about the most we can hope for in life. If we're aware, we can work on it. And I'm aware now. You know, I've become, I'm becoming more aware of like every moment, every minute, every, I won't say every second. I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't have that kind of concentration or I don't have this mindfulness um, like I would like to have it. But... As a concept, I think it's something really worth looking into because, I mean, think about it. Do you want to waste 75, 80, 90 percent of your life? Um, is it always about the future? Do you ever live in the now? Um, I, I'm better at it. I'm much better at it now. I, used, I, I look back and realize that I spent a lot of years just pretty much looking ahead. You know, the next trip, the next holiday, the next this, even just the weekend, getting off from work. And honestly, if you just, you know, I, f I feel if we're living life like that, then we're not doing it right. Something in our life needs an overhaul because, um, you know, this is all we got. You know, imagine uh, as a baby, you know, as a baby, if you're going to have a full life, you've got that whole life ahead of you. But as we get short, as we get older and we get closer to the end, we have less a percent, each day is a greater percentage of life. So I don't want to waste a day. I don't want to waste, I don't want to waste this afternoon. I don't want to waste an hour. You know, I want to suck as much out of this life as I can. And if, and part of that is being tuned in to the present. Um, because to be honest with you, maybe our brains have been infiltrated. We've had memories put in our head. We don't know, we don't know the past. The past is something that's like a movie. I'm being a little facetious here. I'm not. This isn't a conspiracy theory, but the past is like a movie. It's just something that we remember. Um, the future is something that we imagine, or we can guess what it looks like. The only thing we actually know is right now, right in this second. I can only feel something in this second. Um, you know, maybe tomorrow I'm sick as a dog. Maybe tomorrow I get injured and I'm in pain. Right now I don't. I'm not. I feel good. So. All I know is right now. So anyhow, this is just a quick little video. Uh, where I'm going to go from here is I'm just going to not put a lot of pressure and be like, okay, I'm going to be mindful every minute. I'm just going to try to be aware and start being mindful as much as possible and enjoy the present, um, be fully in the present, and no matter what I'm doing, try to um, you know, just take it in as part of life. And this life is a beautiful thing. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to talk to you about some, uh, you know, my path, I've said before, is, is more than raw food. The raw food thing is actually just almost something to give me the clarity. It's almost like a fuel for my path. But, I mean, the path, that's going to have to, you know, everything's evolving. 
I can't, I'm not going to spend 20 years just sitting around nitpicking over food as this, as that, should you eat a starch, should you eat a this, no, no, no. I want to get my diet to that optimal level so I can go on and do the other work that needs to be done along this path. Anyhow, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, hope you subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day. Thanks.